So let's talk about the valuable research component of college visits. You can visit colleges at any point during your high school career. It might be a little less common to visit colleges as a freshman or sophomore, but I still encourage students to do it because it will give you a sense of college. If you're a junior or first semester senior, then you're probably uh, visiting schools that you are seriously considering applying to. So you would be checking out things in a more serious way, a more detailed way, and looking beyond just the general categories. What time of year should you visit a college? Really, any time of year, but obviously it would be best for you to be able to see the, the college students on campus, so during the school year, but that's not always the most convenient because you'll be in school. So spring break is a very common time to go visit colleges. The spring break at a college usually won't align with your spring break, so maybe you can see some students while you're on spring break, and long weekends. But be mindful that those are the most popular times to actually see schools. So there will be a lot of families, a lot of students seeing schools, and it can get kind of hectic. And so don't allow that kind of hectic uh, tour to impact your feelings in the school. There's another component to college visits that not everyone knows about, and that's called demonstrated interest. Demonstrated interest literally means likelihood to enroll, and it's a factor that many schools actually take into consideration when you apply to school. So basically they want to know, they want to track how probable is it that you will say yes if they offer you a spot in admissions. And there are a number of factors that contribute to the uh, demonstrated interest. And we're going to talk about two in detail, but what I want you to know about is the deadline of either early decision or early action. This is when you apply early and find out early. Early decision and early action are not interchangeable terms, they're actually different terms. Early decision means you are committed to going to that school if you're accepted. Early action means you find out early but you're not committed. And so there are some benefits to the admissions office as far as predicting yield, predicting how many students will say yes if they're accepted. And that's one way they'll track demonstrated interest. Another way they'll track demonstrated interest is through your supplemental essays. There will be one main essay through the common application you'll likely have to fill out. And then there are supplemental essays, essays that are just for that particular school you're applying to. And it's through those essays you can really tell a school how important that school was to you, whether you visited, whether you made connections to the school. And that's a way that admissions offices can determine to what extent you're actually interested, you're demonstrating interest to the school. Two other factors that contribute to demonstrate interest that have to do with college visits is the actual campus visit. Did you get on that campus? and interviews. So while you were there, or maybe in your local area, did you put forth the effort to actually get interviewed through the application process? There are two kinds of interviews, evaluative and informational. The evaluative inter interview, this is the one where you sit down with an admissions officer, or it could be a student, a current student at the school, or an alumnus, and they are evaluating you. They are trying to determine whether you're a good fit for the school. The informational interview is different in that the onus is on you to actually drive the conversation. So while in the evaluative interview, the, the representative is asking you all the questions, in an informational interview, you are there to ask the questions yourself. You should treat both the evaluative and informational interview exactly the same. You never know who's sitting across the table from you. That could be the dean of admission, could be your regional rep. So whether it's an evaluative interview or an informational interview, you'll want to treat those seriously and prepare for them. Here are some important tips for the actual college visit. One. Be sure to register, whether it's online before you go, or you can do it in person when you get there. Some colleges track demonstrated interest. They track to see whether you've been on campus, and the registration process is one way they can do that easily. Two, when you get there, make sure to take the tour and the inform information session. Sometimes, uh, because of time constraints, families like to do the drive around, but really that doesn't give you the same experience. If you only have time to take the tour or go to the information session, I would take the tour because it will give you more exposure to a greater part of the campus and there's more variety in the tour. Three, treat the remote visit as important as the actual visit. Many times regional reps or campus rep representatives will come to your high schools or get into your local areas and this is a great opportunity to learn more about the school, to uh, establish a relationship with a campus representative. So if you're able to make those events, be sure to do it. Four, if you are in a sport or if you have a particular academic interest, it's a good idea to arrange to see the coach at that college or maybe a professor in that academic subject. So one, you can learn more about that particular field and two, you're establishing relationships at the, a potential college where you'll go to. Five, and this is really important, no more than two college visits in one day. Trust me on that one. 
If you try to fit three or even four into one day, that third college you won't like because you'll be cranky, you'll be tired. It's a lot to handle in one day. Six, sibling visits don't count. And what I mean by that is if, if you went on college tours when you were younger for an older sibling, it's unlikely that it made any kind of impression or any accurate impression on you. It wasn't for you, it was for someone else. So I would go back because this process is really about you and, and it shouldn't be a leftover kind of experience. Seven, beware of the two most important factors in the college visit experience, weather and the tour guide. And I, I say that in a joking manner, you know, weather is different than climate. Climate is certainly a consideration, but the weather that day can have a major impact on how you feel and how the college campus looks. So just be mindful that the weather can, can have that effect. And the tour guide is just one individual. And so whether that tour guide makes a good impression on you or, or maybe not so good of an impression on you, it really shouldn't have that big of a bearing on whether it's the right fit for you. So just being aware of those two factors can be helpful when you're on your college visit. And number eight, track your thoughts and track your impressions. You'll be seeing a number of schools and you can conflate them if you don't keep track of what you think. You'll forget which school had what kind of dorm room or what kind of food or, or which pretty campus. So just keep, but you won't be able to remember everything crisply unless you keep track of it the day you're there.